I am Billy Harris. At age 16, I was involved in the beating death of a man and with six other teens. I'm sorry, five other teens. And ultimately was sentenced to 35 years in prison. So my experience with the criminal justice system was I felt like they treated me like, like a monster. Um, even though I was initially put in uh, a juvenile facility until a certification hearing to certify me as an adult, I feel like they treated me as an adult from the beginning. Um, like I said, they treated me like somebody to be feared. So I was sentenced to uh, 35 years. I pled guilty to a second degree murder charge and immediately went to adult prison. I ultimately did 15 years of that sentence um, and have now been back home for 15 years. I work for a nonprofit, have had a job with them for a little over 11 years now in St. Louis, Missouri. So in my experience, the criminal justice system doesn't do, well, I won't say anything, but they do very, very little to help one change um, who they are, change their thinking process, change their beliefs. Um, in my experience, the criminal justice system is only interested in the punishment side of, of justice and it's all about maintaining control over the population, over the inmates. So they do very little in, in terms of rehabilitation. When I first got locked up, you were able to get a Pell Grant and go take college classes in prison. Um, they did away with that. And that was society, that wasn't the justice system, but they actually put it up for a vote, at least in the state of Missouri where I'm from. And the people, society, voted against giving us an education. Well, I think in the juvenile justice system, there's more opportunity for programming and for counseling and for more one-on-one -on -one interaction uh, with an offender, which I think is very important because youthful offenders, more often than not, are, are broken people. And so we need, we need structure, but not the structure of being locked in a cell, being told when you can eat, told when you can shower, told when you can exercise. The real structure, I think, that juvenile offenders need is counseling, is mentoring, is someone caring for them, showing compassion um, to help them know that they can change. So for me, um, I'm obviously a white male in America, which is a white male dominated society. And even though I didn't realize it as a kid that I had certain privileges just because of my background, once I got to prison, I immediately became aware that I was now a minority in that setting. And even though I didn't realize it at the time of why those numbers were the way they were, as I've educated myself and seen the tough on uh, crime, laws, and legislation, it, it's pretty obvious that minorities, that black and brown people are disproportionately sentenced to longer terms. They rarely have the economic benefits that could get them off like, like many rich or affluent white people do. And as an adult, I can see these things clearly in the media and see how 
two people committing almost identical crimes, but being different colors, one being white and one being almost any other ethnicity. Um, there's just no fairness in the system and the way that they're treated. The best alternative for, for our youth is to give them compassion and love and an atmosphere or, or a space to where they can safely review who they are and why they're making the choices that they're making. And they need someone that's able to identify with them and at the same time show them that positive change is, is available. Kids are kids and I think that we have to remember that. We need to get back to the old saying that it takes a village because I feel like people have gotten so far away from feeling any responsibility to raise kids that aren't their own. And I don't mean that, that we have to buy them things and that we have to shuttle them here and there and be the parent for them, but we have to be a positive influence for them. And we have to care about them in a way that they feel that we care about them. So I feel that every adult should make it their, their mission to take one kid under their wing and just look out for them and just talk to them but more importantly to listen to them and to try to understand where they're coming from sometimes I think as adults we forget the changes in our society and it's much different growing up today than it was well when I was a kid or 50 years ago say and some people don't, just don't want to let that go. So I hear so many times an adult say, well, I went through these things as a child and I didn't turn to crime. I didn't turn to drugs. So they blame the child for their actions. And I'm not in the least saying that a child is not responsible. What I'm really saying is that that kid wasn't responsible for forming his beliefs and his character. He wasn't responsible for the environment that he was forced to grow up in. So he didn't get to choose who he or she had become at that point in their life. We really don't get to choose who we are until we're adults ourselves and make a cognitive connection that we can choose who we are, what we do, what we like, and we better understand the real difference between right and wrong and the consequences of our actions. That as a child, it's really, really hard to see past the weekend grounding. You can only see as far as Monday morning when you're no longer grounded and you have no concept of what comes after that. 